In the United States, it's estimated that 30% of adults are regularly sleep deprived. If you didn't know YouTube boxing, good for you. YouTube boxing is one of the biggest things to take over the internet in I would say the last two to three years. Kind of starting with Jake Paul doing boxing. Now KSI, that funny <laughs> British man, he's so funny. He's doing boxing now too. I don't know if he actually got the tattoo legacy on his back, but if he did, it makes me sick to my stomach a little bit, if I'm being completely honest. But today we're going to be talking about the ending of one of the biggest, cringiest, douchiest internet beefs and boxing promotions I've ever seen in one of my life. It, it, I've ever seen in my life. One of my lives. This is what my past self looked like. Which, of course, I'm talking about Logan Paul versus Dylan Dennis. And if you don't know who those people are, you're probably like 40. Logan Paul, he's the guy who did this forest thing. I think there's someone hanging right there. We all know that. He made Prime. They say it's an energy drink, but I don't think it really does anything. It's just low on sugar. Philion did a video talking about how it's a scam, and I trust Philion. But a little birdie told me that Logan Paul and KSI make new flavors whenever they're kissing in private, because they're little cuties. That's what a little birdie told me. Oh. <coughs> yeah, so I hear that uh, Logan Paul and uh, KSI, they make new flavors whenever they're bumping, sucking, and touching, and doing all kinds of stuff, so it's kind of freaky stuff, but yeah, they're, uh, they're definitely getting frisky. All right, I'm out of here. And I believed every word. I mean, he's a talking bird. Hard not to believe a magical creature like that. <laughs> Have you drinking Prime before? Does your 14-year-old son who wears long tube socks and Nike slide-ons, does he drink Prime? You drink Prime before? You go to Walmart, you drink Prime? Have you drink Prime? You like Prime? Do you like Prime, Nick? Yeah, everybody likes Prime. Have you, have you, drank, have you drank Prime before? <laughs> he's in the WWE, he has a podcast. He's an internet guy! Who gives a shit? He's Logan Paul. He's a total workhorse. <laughs> The other guy is an equally fucking stupid guy named Dylan Danis. He's an MMA guy. He did some Brazilian jiu-jitsu. <laughs> did he do some... They're both scammers. Logan Paul scammed a lot of people with his dink doink and his crypto zoo. And Dylan Danis, I forgot what he did, but he also, he scammed people also. Do you remember what he scammed people with? He scammed somebody. They're both scammers. They're both terrible people. If I'm being honest, I, I don't know him. But, it, you know, if you scam people, I mean, you're a bad guy. But honestly, hey, who isn't a bad guy nowadays, right? But today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. Do you want to up your smell game without investing tons of money? Then Scentbird's for you. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you try designer fragrances every month for just $17. There are currently over 600 perfumes and colognes to choose from at Scentbird, including well-known brands like Gucci, Prada, Versace, and also beloved indie labels like Skylar and Confessions of a Rebel. For this month of Scentbird, I received Versace's Eros Flame, Aqua de Parma's Boo Mediterranean Arsani di Capri. But out of all of them, my favorite was The Handsome Devil. It has nice notes of grapefruit and citrusy spices and scents that make me want to take my wife out to dinner and get some nice steaks, and everyone will know that I'm sexy and cool. <laughs> but experiment with all the scents this little bird has to give you to see which one you like the most. With each fragrance you get, you'll receive 30 day supply, they have affordable and flexible subscription plans so you can cancel when you want, take a pause when you need, and continue smelling your best. Use my coupon code PAPAMEAT to get 55% off your first month of Scentbird. That's just a little over seven dollars for your first month available right now in usa and canada thanks Scent bird for sponsoring the video be sure to check out their links below and back to the video but this all started i'm getting off topic did you maybe i should drink prime i should get that would clear my head up right these guys were set to fight these two have been publicly feuding for years but the feud escalated when dylan danis posted explicit photos of logan paul's fiance nina agdahl on social media which nina agdahl she's a renowned danish model who gained significant recognition for her appearance on the 50th anniversary cover of sports illustrated swimsuit issue <laughs> I made it! And uh, on August 8th, it was announced that Dennis would fight Logan in a boxing match on October 14th. Dennis left no moment to spare and posted this photo of Nina and Leonardo DiCaprio on the same day of the announcement. Immediately started doing psychological warfare, saying that Nina was a bit of a dirty leg, she was a bit of a tiger tail, she liked to get around.
And there was a lot of photo evidence. Some of it photoshopped, but there was a lot of evidence. Dylan is doing psychological warfare and he's amassing a troll army to psychologically fight Logan Paul. And you're probably wondering, what is KSI doing during this? Which, if anything, people keep talking about Dylan Danis' Twitter. KSI's Twitter is so cringy. It's a cancer field. I mean, there's no way to go about it. There's little shells of cancer that you have to swim around. A lot of narcissism. Some of the things he says, it's almost as if, like, Dr. Dr. Seuss wrote it for him. With every year that you breathe, that day will be a constant reminder that you lost. And he has this God complex that's fucking amazing. Did you drink your prime yet? Did they tell you that did they tell you that to drink your prime yet? Had they did you see a picture of them holding prime yet? Have you drank in your prime yet? The act of Dylan Dennis doing this with a psychological tactic and the lead up to their scheduled boxing match, and he continued to post multiple pictures a day of Nina and Logan until the day of the fight. Dennis has posted content featuring her in a negative light 250 times on Twitter, which at the same time, I'm kind of like, who gives a shit? If you're an adult, why would you care? Logan has gone on record and he said like, well, dude, like obviously my girl has past lovers. Like uh, who cares? What, are, what the fuck are you doing, bro? And then you have the troll in mindset of some of the Dennis fans who are sitting there being like, dude, your girl's used up, dude. Used goods, dude. I used to drink Prime, now I drink Gatorade, dude. Did you drink your Prime yet? Did you pray today? The harassment was so severe that Logan Paul started turning off his comments. It's become world fucking news. People are going on podcasts talking about the ethics of fighting. Even Brendan Schaub I saw recently was on Twitter saying that suing somebody for fighting is a weak move, which is if Brandon Shab crawls out of the fucking shadows to try to make a diss tweet. You know that this is it, it's 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 gone viral. Pretty funny. But he goes on this podcast. He goes on this podcast. Logan says this. <laughs> uh, I d Dylan says this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant outrage. The drama continues. The fight hasn't even fucking happened yet. <laughs> In this time, the fight hasn't happened yet. Yeah, Logan's taking pictures of himself without a shirt on. Everybody says he does steroids. I don't know enough about steroids to do it, but he looks like a superhero. We should get a Logan Paul action figure. <laughs> the Dylan Danis, he posts pictures of himself and he says, oh, this is what a guy not on steroids looks like. <laughs> This extremely cringe back and forth of the most petty thing. It's honestly building the fight up to be something that's actually worth watching because it's two complete fucking imbeciles. But as these altercations are happening online, Nina, the fucking maverick, Paul, or Agbel, Mrs. Prime says, you know what? I'm suing Dylan Danis. <laughs> and it's over. And it's over this video that Dylan Danis posted. Roll the clip. All I want is like a big fat sausage just destroying my body. At least you needed some prime. <laughs> Old girl was her thirsty for some cock. Who's not thirsty for some cock every once in a while? Whenever I'm thirsty for cock, I just drink Prime. You're thirsty for cock, Nick? If I gave you a thousand dollars, would you drink Prime right now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that's brave. I do it for free. Yeah, well, who wouldn't? Did, 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 have we? Has anyone drinking uh, Prime today yet or not? Dylan also said that he claims to have nudes of Nina as well, which is that's where I was like, that's creepy. Why do you have that? If anything, all this stuff is very stalkerish. Which people are probably also giving him photos, like, oh, I found this one, but I. I also like to think that he's just sitting in a room by himself, just like scourging through the interwebs for photos of Dil or of, uh, Logan's wife. Which also, dude, can I take a break for a second to talk about Prime? No, I'm kidding. Can I take a second to talk about Logan's wedding proposal video? Oh yeah, that was pretty cringe. Not only is it cringe, but it feels so fabricated. So unbelievably fabricated. What was there, like six fucking camera angles? And he gets on his knee and he reaches behind like a plant where I'm like, dude, you walk down there with her. You set the thing behind there and he just like grabbed it. He's like, honestly, baby. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And it feels like acting. It doesn't feel very genuine. But who am I? Who am I to say? Who am I to say? <sighs> Gold Peak Tea. Wish it was a Prime. Wish it was a Prime. Kind of in the same bottle as a Prime, huh? Similar shape. What came first, Gold Peak Tea or Prime? Everyone knows Prime. In our hearts, Prime. It's kind of funny because this video is going to have the gamer sub spots. <laughs> <laughs> Following these actions, Nina Agdol filed a lawsuit and obtained a temporary restraining order against Dylan Danis, claiming that his tweets have caused her to suffer humiliation, emotional distress, among other issues. She is seeking $150,000 per violation, aka per tweet, which let me tell you something, homeboy... <laughs> Homeboy's in for quite the laundry bill after this one. I mean, this, in my opinion, I've seen a lot of people talk about this. I've seen Oompaville talk about it. 
That's pretty much it. That's the only person I saw. I know a lot of people have been talking about it. For me, if you're a public person and you date every celebrity on earth and you do have a video of you saying that you want some cock and stuff like that, at what point do you just say, who care? I, yeah. I did that. The reason this is such a problem is people say that it's bullying. Well, dude, tough shit. I mean, honestly, you're a public figure. You're married to Logan Paul, one of the most hated fucking people on the internet. I mean, am I wrong? What Dylan is doing is childish. I don't condone it. But at the same time, you're winning in every other aspect of your fucking life. I think that you can realize that some people aren't gonna like you. Everybody needs to swallow that pill. I feel like her husband, Logan, I feel like he has been able to swallow that pill and he's just kind of like, I don't give a fuck. Which also led me to believe I was wondering if who put the idea of suing him in her ear? I don't know. Making a lot of speculations. Logan started doing meme warfare himself, and he was doing a lot of cute stuff as well. Mocking him that he's gonna beat him in the fight, and he's gonna go broke. Or he could leave the fight and still go broke. It's a loss-loss situation from Mr. Prime himself. Logan Paul deep faked an interview with Dylan. Logan, I apologize. Huh? I'm a bitch. I'm not a real fighter. Saying all sorts of things. So now the cringe warfare is becoming lethal. It's almost as if all world treaties are off and the cringe is accumulating to more and more horrible, horrible things. In a recent interview with comedian Andrew Schultz on his podcast, Flagrant, which my friend Noel Miller was on. Black people. I didn't watch the full episode. I'll be honest. I was kind of jealous. I was like, there's my friend. <laughs> They're making him laugh, not me. Does He's that Filipino. fucking you do the podcast Jeez. with? No. <laughs> it's really funny, like, reading some of the comments being like, is this dude even funny? Like, what does he do? <sighs> Paul admitted that Danish jibes were funny, telling the host, I'll be honest. The guy is fucking so good at Twitter. It's top tier trolling. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I chose him as an opponent. At the end of the day, it's all fight promo. It's all fight promo. Which... It feels weird to me too, because when I saw this or heard about this, I was like, if you knew that he was a top tier troll, why are you getting mad that he's trolling? You've been bitching about him for posting all of these bullying Nina, sweet, innocent Nina, beautiful fucking angel Nina, but then you're giving him compliments for this. I thought that was weird, but luckily it was fight night. October 14th finally rolled around and the gloves were on. Almost said off, but it's a boxing match, so they're definitely on. You have Dylan Danis in one corner. Make martial arts champion Brazilian guy I'm pretty sure he kicks people and he's good at strangling people Joe Rogan had to say this about him that kid has some fucking serious jiu-jitsu Joe Rogan his nipples get really hard in ice baths and he knows a lot about MMA so that was a good vouch Logan Paul looks like he's on six different types of bull testosterone he was towering over Dennis but who would win the fight look at this shit Ding, 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 it's fight day. That's right, the cringiest day has finally come. It has been a, it's been a very funny series of events that have led up to the conclusion of this story. First, the press conference. We have to talk about the press conference, which you obviously have no respect for women. Yeah. Logan and Dylan, they got to do their little face off and there was like a piece of like plexiglass blocking them and there was like a cage. They just for people's safety, really? I don't know. Dylan Danis looked hot. He looked like he was on top of the world here. I mean, he was giving quick jabs. Logan really was fumbling the charisma ball and Logan Paul even brought up Chris Hansen on stage to catch this predator and Dylan Danis just kind of shoot him away by talking about his tax fraud evasion allegations and go pay your taxes, I, buddy. I, go pay your taxes, I, buddy. I no issue there, brother. Chris Hansen had no business being on that stage. He was like, why don't you have a seat? Right? Remember when I said, why don't you have a seat? And he's like, why don't you pay your taxes? Oh, don't worry. I'm all squared up on that end. Things were going good until the end. And then once the press conference was beginning to end, Dylan said a little quip. Logan said a little quip. And then Logan chucked his microphone at Dylan Dennis. Dylan Dennis freaks out, runs up, and it looks like he either swipes. I think he threw the microphone and it cut Logan Paul's face and the internet went crazy. People were like, is he going to pull out of the fight? We don't know. It's the day before the fight what's gonna happen here but luckily i think logan made a tweet or something he's like i'm not giving up i don't care all in all it was a cringe fest but it's a press conference i think logan lost that one but what followed on fight day was one of the most irrehensible cringy disappointing waste of times to ever be brought up on the internet logan paul simply boxed i mean he threw some punches dylan danis was doing some kind of weird shit where he like would do a side jab like this he tried taking logan to a submissive like chokehold a couple 
couple times. I think he was trying to clown him. There's a part where he laid on his back and spread his legs open, and it was just like, it's all Brazilian jiu-jitsu shit, because in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it's like all ground fighting. So I don't, I think he was just trying to lure him into that, but it was one of the most pathetic displays of a fight ever, when people really just wanted a boxing match at the end of the day. Dylan, going into this fight, had everything to gain. In a way, I thought had nothing to lose, because historically, these are two kind of pieces of shit. It's just two fucking Whoa! hitting each other in the face. I know I can't say Whoa! but that's just how I feel. I think that if Dylan would have just simply fought, he still would have come out on top, even if he didn't win. Cause I mean, newsflash, he doesn't win. Not only does he not win, but in the last couple seconds, he tries to guillotine, chokehold slam Logan into the ground, slips, gets up and starts throwing his hands at the security guards more than he threw punches at Logan the entire time. And it's kind of a big brawl breaks out or like all of uh, England's security officers poured into the ring. I don't know why there are so many security officers, but there we are. Paul dominated with a striking rate nearly 20 times higher than Dana's. I mean, he threw more punches, he landed more punches. He was participating in the event. Say what you will about Logan Paul, at least he showed up and did the thing. The way that Dana's approached it all was like, it was mockery, but it wasn't like fun. Like we're taking the piss out of these rich YouTube people. It was just like watching a disabled child flop around on the floor and try to like strangle somebody. Here's a key example. This actually perfectly reminds me of this. There was a disabled kid in, I don't know if we can use this, but I'm just gonna leave it in for you, Jono. There was a mentally challenged kid in my high school. The varsity football players would juice him up and like he would power lift with them. He was excessively strong, scary strong. And he would put people in chokeholds and you, there's no way out of it. He strangled people to unconsciousness four or five times. And it's like, well, how do you really punish this person besides like putting him in a different room? But then that feels kind of like, you know, tragic, right? That's kind of what it felt like with the Dylan Dennis thing, except he was weaker and didn't successfully do it at all. It's just mostly the mentally challenged thing, I think was the combining factor there. But needless to say, it was a giant upset. Dylan got absolutely fucking torched on Twitter, which is the place where he was making his comeback. There's no way he can hold his head up now. I mean, it's just, it's an embarrassment. I mean, I don't think it could have gone any worse. Maybe if he would have shit himself and pissed and he like cried, that might have gone worse, but it's pretty close. I mean, it's, it's pretty rough. In the post fight, Paul expressed his intention to challenge Rey Mysterio in WWE, who gives a fuck, face Conor McGregor in boxing match and is open to MMA bout against Dennis, provided Dennis forfeits his entire purse for the match, which purse is a uh, boxing term for her payment money. But it's like, why would he do that? He probably made millions of dollars off that fight. I wonder how much money he made. People paid money to watch it. Fucking idiots, dude. And pretty much this story has now come to a point where Dylan is making excuses about how he didn't train at all. And it's like, what are you talking about? So you spent this whole time talking shit. You didn't train and you were just going to show up and do that. You fucking idiot. It's gone completely in Logan's side. But also, I think Logan kind of just dropping all the beef afterwards, I think, makes him. It puts him more in the light. It's still cringe. I mean, also, KSI lost to Tommy Fury. And that was a whole thing. And what I what I love about these whole situations with people doing YouTube boxing is that KSI the whole time, holy shit, just the cringiest videos. Tommy Fury, October 14th. This will be the day that you'll hate for the rest of your life. Because it'll be the day that you lost to a YouTuber. Soon you will face reality and it will hurt you. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Tommy! Yeah. And his, his chest says knowledge? With <gasps> the cringe. Oh, it's terrible. And then when he loses, he makes like a motivational post being like, people always count me out because I'm the YouTuber with big dreams. I never said I was that good and I gave it my all. It's really fucking convenient when the rest of the time it's like, I'm a boxer, I'm a legitimate boxer. I'm one of the best fighters in the world. And then whenever anything else happens, well, I'm just a YouTuber, dude. Like get off of me, man. Like I'm a fucking YouTuber, all right, God. I will say that this might go down as one of the most meteoric, me meteoric? Me meteoric. Meteor. Mediocre? No, no, no. Me me meteor. This might go down as one of the biggest, most infamous cringe events in history. The buildup with assaulting <laughs> a woman married to Logan Paul. Boom. Logan Paul trying to clap back by making very mediocre memes. Boom. Scammers, people that are just parasites on the internet that want nothing but your money and your attention to benefit themselves because they're pieces of shit. Boom. And then you just have KSI's Twitter, his tweets. 
<laughs> Boom! And it all collides into the most lackluster boxing event on both sides. So boring, so uneventful. Boom. And also, dude, the promo pictures for this stuff. Pictures of people like... You know what I mean? For the boxing promo stuff, like KSI. I'm a freak! It's the most overhyped. God, it feels like a fucking Ponzi scheme, doesn't it? I mean, are they really doing benefits for the game? I mean, they're making people more interested in boxing, I guess. That's a good thing, but it's just so cringy. <laughs> I don't fucking know, dude. I don't have any side. Fuck everybody. I don't give a shit. All I know is that Dylan Dennis, dude. Massive, massive L. I think I saw a tweet. I think FaZe Banks said it. And he said, I literally just watched Dylan Danis's 15 seconds of fame die right in front of me. That felt like a, the perfect tweet to encapsulate what just happened. So it was it was a roller coaster. I wonder how, I wonder how Nina's doing. I haven't heard anything about from her. I was honestly expecting Nina to have like a video being like, ooh, Dylan, you lost. It'd be funny if she just uploaded another video of her in the exact same thing being like, I need some hard cock. <laughs> and she just like doubled down on it. That's how you really win. She's just like, I don't give a shit. I just want to get piped down. Logan's a speed bump, dude. I'm going to go after fucking Tommy Lee Jones next. Dude, imagine if she had sex with Tommy Lee Jones after this. It would be insane. 87-year-old Tommy Lee Jones. She's like, I loved you as Two-Face in those 90s Batman movies. He's like, thank you very much, sweetheart. <laughs> That's why Tommy Lee Jones. Did you like the movie Men in Black? She's like, ooh, that scared me. I don't like Men in Black. He's like, uh, he's a scary movie about aliens and stuff like that. I'm Tommy Lee Jones. Actually, we're going to end this. Play the monologue at the end of No Country for Old Men, Tommy Lee Jones' monologue. All right, then. Two of them both had my father in them. It's peculiar. I'm older now than he ever was by 20 years. In a sense, he's the younger man. It was like we was both back in older times, and I was a horseback going through the mountains of the night. Rode past me and kept on going. Never said nothing going by. Just rode on past. He's fixing to make a fire somewhere out there and all that dark and all that cold. I knew that whenever I got there, he'd be there. Then I woke up. Don't forget to check out Scentbird. You want to smell good? Be good and smell good. Click the link in the description below. It helps out the channel. And you know, I bet you smell like a big piece of shit. So consider Scentbird. It's good. It's good stuff.